John, welcome, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, cool. I'm. I learned many things from you, and I'm like, I I should have John on my channel, and it it's really amazing to have you. Thanks for coming, man. Yeah, no, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Cool, cool, cool. If someone doesn't know who John is, so can you give a bit of intro, please? Yeah, so I'm John Sanmez. I run a company called Bulldog Mindset, and the focus of Bulldog Mindset is to teach men how to be men today how to get them to get rid of the victim mindset, which is the opposite of the bulldog mindset, which is blaming other people, women, life, circumstances for where you are, right? Everything might not be your fault, but it is your responsibility as a man. So I teach men the things that they need to know in life, everything from the mindset, which is so important based in Stoic philosophy, to fitness, how to get in shape, lose weight, get strong from the finance side, how to build a business, invest in real estate and manage your money, get ahead in your career. And then the dating side, relationships, women, that part of it. A lot of my focus today is more on the the financial and, and business building side of things. And then the the mindset and philosophy, because I think that those are the most important things that, that most guys, especially young guys need to be focusing on right now. Oh, amazing. And uh, have you seen Mad Men? Yes, that, yes, that I've TV seen that. Yes. So I would I wanted to ask you this question, right? There is this character like Don Draper, and he's very like traditional and masculine. So right. what what do you think? Like, what is a man? Like, to, in today's day, is that a Don Draper is a man, or these maybe if you go to the different side like TikTok, <laughs> the, uh-huh, those yeah. those guys. What what is a man according to you? Yeah, no, I think it's more of the Don Draper side of things. So I didn't watch a lot of that show, but I'm familiar with his character. And he does what he believes is correct. There's many instances, I believe, in that show where other people disagree with what he says. He's going to step on some toes. People's feelings are going to be hurt. But he does what he believes is right. That is what it is to be a man, is to make your own judgment calls, and not to ignore people's opinions and not to be a dictator, to be a benevolent leader, but to ultimately rely on your judgment and to be willing to accept the consequences for your actions and for your beliefs and what you believe is right. And that's where so many men fall down today is they are looking for approval. They're looking for approval from society. They're looking for approval from women. They're looking for approval from their dad or their mom, their parents. And because of that, they compromise their own integrity and their own values, or they're afraid of the consequences. And so they want to be a man and they want to be able to be an authority and a leader, but they back down because of the consequences or they don't want to accept those consequences. They feel like they're a victim and they're doing the right thing and therefore they should get good things. Being a man is realizing that you do what you believe is right, regardless of the outcome. It doesn't matter what the outcome is. The outcome doesn't matter. You do the thing because you do the thing, because it is the thing that you believe is correct. And sometimes you get rewarded and sometimes you get smacked in the face for it. But regardless of it, you own that choice. You have to own your life and own responsibility. If you blame anything in your life on someone else, you're not a man. I agree 100%. Is this thing like doing what what's right and you deep down we all know that what is right and what is the right thing to do if, if we say in cold approach my channel is uh, mainly focused on cold approach and mm-hmm. like day game uh, so if you see a girl walking around in the city and that you have to talk to her and that's the only way you can get her so so many excuses come to right oh she's walking too fast she's she's too tall she's this one came last <laughs> like yesterday to me <laughs> so, but i did it anyway so uh, these excuses come and even no, even if these excuses are coming, you have to do it. Right. That, yeah. That's, yeah. It's because it's, it. it's, it's, it's not about her. It's about you. This is the thing that I think so many guys, especially to get involved in black pills, stuff and all this stuff. It's not about it. And it's not about success. It's about yeah. you. It's about you overcoming your fears. It's about you having practicing your own sovereignty as a, a human, as a man, to be able to do what you want to do and to not allow other things to hold you back. It's not about success. It's not about her. It's not about how she reacts to you. It's about you're afraid to do this thing, go and do this thing. Or you at the deeper level, you desire to do this thing. That's why it came into your head. 
So what is preventing you from doing it? If you cannot exercise your will upon the world, then you are in a weaker position. And that's what this is about. It's about working on that. Now, if you work on that and you build your ability to go and confront your fears and to do the things that you want to do and to exert your will upon the world, will you eventually get good results? Yes, you will. But it's not about the results. It's about doing the thing that you're supposed to do. Because if you focus it on the results, like so many guys do, you're going to get disillusioned. You're going to get disappointed because you're going to get way more bad results. It doesn't even matter. You're short, tall, good looking, ethnic, doesn't matter. I mean, obviously, if you've got some of the good things going for you aesthetically, you're going to get better results, but it still doesn't matter. Everybody is going to get more bad results than good results. It's just how life is. And so that's why if you focus on the results, you're going to give up. You're going to you're going to become disillusioned. You're going to become jaded. You're going to say it doesn't work. These guys are full of it. And you're going to get the victim mindset. So, yeah. Why do you think this these guys, you said black pill, black pillars too, right? Why do you think most people or these guys make these excuses and go towards the choose the victim side and not be like, OK, I, I have some things I can work on and that will help me in getting results. Maybe it will take time, but it will eventually be mine. I think the biggest reason is because it gives them an excuse. It it allows them to not look inward and to escape that self-judgment of themselves. Because if it's someone else's fault, if there's no point in doing it anyway, because I'm not gonna, it's not gonna work, I'm not gonna get results, then I let myself off the hook. Then if I choose not to do it and I choose not to conquer my fears and I choose not to go to the gym and improve myself and work hard because I say there's no point to it, then it's okay because it didn't matter anyway. And so that is why is because it's an easier path, right? It's much, much more difficult to face the challenges in life. And especially knowing that you may still fail. Again, this is one of the things for every entrepreneur. I, I just launched a product maybe a week ago, and I've spent a lot of time working on it. Zero sales, zero, all right? But that, hey, I have a lot of successful products that I've launched as well. And so you don't know. And that's the scariest thing, right? It's the scariest thing in games, the scariest thing in improving yourself, or it's the scariest thing in entrepreneurship is that you have to face the unknown. You have to say, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't work. Maybe I'll, I will do this and I'll put my best effort in and I will still fail. And that's what people are scared of. They're scared that if they really try and then they still fail, then who are they? It's a huge ego blow. And so the guys that are talking about these things and saying these things, the problem is that their ego is too large. They're afraid to do the things that would damage their ego. If they go and they talk to a girl and she rejects them, it damages their ego. They can sit in their mom's basement and they can say that they're this awesome guy and this great guy and it's not their fault. It doesn't hurt their ego. They can keep their ego in, intact. But when they have to go into the real world and they have to face possible failure, face rejection, it's a blow to the ego. Yeah, yeah. This rejection is part of this, uh, part of life, basically, not just game. Yeah. And, and the thing about rejection is that, you see, no one can reject you except for yourself. Rejection is a choice that you make to decide that you're rejected. It is, it is only you. And I'll give you a good example of this. Let's suppose that you saw someone and they dropped a $100 bill on the ground and you picked up the $100 bill and you went up to them and you're like, hey, you dropped this. This is your $100 bill. I just saw it. And they're like, oh, no, that's not mine. I don't. Why are you bothering me? You wouldn't feel rejected. <laughs> you would laugh. You'd be like, why? <laughs> this person is dumb. Like, all right, I'll keep the $100 bill or I'll give it to someone else who wants a $100 bill. Hey, you over there, you want a $100 bill? I just found this on the ground. They're like, oh yeah, I love it. So it's because you believe that you're giving something of value. So it's impossible to be rejected if you believe you're giving something of value. Okay, now if you go up to someone and you say, hey, can I have $100? And they tell you no. All right. Now you feel you might feel rejected. Why? Because you're extracting value. You want something. If you're giving something, if you feel like you are valuable as a man, right, you could go up to any girl. And if she does not accept you, it's not rejection. She's an idiot because <laughs> you're a million dollar bill. You know what I'm saying? That's the mindset. That's why rejection. Yes, it is part of life, but 
it's always a choice that you make. You have decided that you're rejected because you didn't value yourself enough because you allowed someone else's judgment to supersede your own. If your judgment is the, of, of yourself is the thing that matters more than anything else and you believe that you are of high value and you have some evidence to prove it because you've done things in your life, no one can reject you. It doesn't matter what they say. Yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree, man, hundred percent. This is the same uh, mindset I have too with game. I cultivated this by the same thing, right? Uh, like I am a man. I am working on my social skills. I am working on my career. I am uh, trying to make a better life for myself. And if a girl comes in my life, she will have a better experience. And that's basically it. I am giving something, not just uh, like I am not using her for like just my pleasure purposes. Exactly. Yeah, uh, I was watching your uh, interview with John Anthony Lifestyle, and it was amazing interview, man. You were talking about uh, books, like you read five hundred books a year. So, yeah, you you <laughs> more more like fifty to sixty. But, oh, uh, sorry, yeah, I, maybe yeah. I misheard it. But yeah. you watch that? Uh, you uh, hear them on three X speed? That yeah, yeah. Audio so books. what I did, and I haven't done it for a while. I haven't been as much this year because I stopped running, but I'm gonna start running again. But what I would do in my normal practice is that when I'm out running, usually an hour, two hours a day when I was training, I would listen to audiobooks at 3x speed. So I would get through a lot of books in a week, maybe three, four books a week, some weeks. Right now, what I do is I always have a book that's just on my desk. And when I'm doing like Pomodoro technique and I have a five minute break, I read the book, right? If I'm at the gym, I'm listening to audiobook. If I'm in the car, I'm listening to an audiobook. So I just keep it a habit of constantly listening to or reading a book. I have on my phone the Kindle app. And if I'm standing in line somewhere, I'm waiting somewhere, I'm, you know, I try to make it a habit to read the book because that, that's one of the best ways to, you know, if you think about it, like we have a limited set of experiences and time span in our life, right? Books are the way to get a thousand lives worth of wisdom. That that is that is the thing. It's like that you can't your experience. A lot of people's books that you read are the culmination of their entire life wisdom. There's bad books. There's good books, but really valuable books can bring you insights that it would take you years and years to develop on your own. And so every single person, every single man should be reading at least one book a month. Really, one book a week if you can do that, and that's going to change your life pretty much more than any other thing. Oh, what are you reading right now? Which books? I'm rereading Alex Hermosi's $100 million offer. That's a really good book. And I just finished Buy Then Build. It's about buying a business in, instead of building one. What's your favorite book? Like, uh, What's your list? Like, yeah, it's, it's tough to say. There's a lot that, and it changes from time to time. But one of my all-time favorites is The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. A really good book. If you're facing procrastination, he personifies it in that book as resistance. And it's a very good book. I've gone through that book probably 10 times. One critical book I think all, all men should read is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. It's a classic book, really good book human psychology in there to develop your social skills. Uh, Psycho-Cybernetics by Maxwell Malt, really good book as well. That is one of the pillar books on self-image, right? Essentially, Psycho-Cybernetics says that whatever your self-image is, whatever your view of yourself is, you could call it identity, you cannot surpass that. You will go down to that level. So the only way to improve in life, the only way to make lasting changes in life is to change your image of yourself. That is every single person, they end up rising or falling to whatever their self-image is. As a Man Think It, a really good classic book, very short. Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. He was a Holocaust survivor. He wrote that book and he had all kinds of horrible things done to him. If, if anyone had the right to claim the victim mindset, he did, but he never called himself a victim. Instead, what he believed and what he wrote in that book was that in between when something happens to you and your reaction, there's a space and you get to choose your interpretation of that event. So that is the power that you have that no one can take from you. Those are some of the ones, there's a lot of really good books out there, but those are some of the, the key ones that I constantly recommend. I was uh, having this debate about books with a friend of mine that 
he said that like you can't become another person just by reading books you have to like uh, he was into action more action action i'm like yeah yeah but uh, let's just say if, if a guy worked on himself for 50 years and he's about to like retire and he try, he says that okay i'll share this thing then he writes a book so it's 50 years of experience in this one book do you agree with this yeah i mean obviously it's a combination of the two right and so if you put a cucumber in in pickle brine it will become a pickle so whatever your environment is so if your environment is reading books on personal development and improving yourself in a positive outlook in life in in expanding yourself in business and health and relationships and all these things you cannot help but become those things it works for the negative as well if you surround yourself with a friend group of losers who waste their time who are negative and bring negative energy you will become that so if you surround yourself with books that are good books that have the right message you will have to become that you will end up taking action it is very unlikely that you would not take action in that case now it's not an excuse to not take action your friend is right in the sense that taking action is the most important thing Yeah. But like I said, I think most people who are in that environment will start taking action. If you're not taking action, if you're just reading things, then yeah, obviously you need to take steps. You need to take action. In in some cases, it's better to read one book 50 times than to read 50 books and and absorb all that information and start taking action on that. I think there's yeah. I, I try to have a balance of that in my life. I have books that like I said I was rereading Alex Herm- Hermosi's 100 million dollar offer book multiple times. and I'm taking action on the pieces in that book but then I also have books that I just listen to and I'm just absorbing information. Well, let's start from the beginning. How was this journey for you when you started? There's different stages of the journey for me as I went through different transformations in my own life. When I started off when I was younger, I was very shy, very introverted, lazy, not very physically fit at all. And one of the very first transformations that happened for me was I remember in high school waking up one morning and having this thought why not me and I realized there there was no answer to that question why not me I could be anything genetically I was a human just like other guys that I was jealous of or I feel like they were the jocks in school or whatever it's like I could be that I could dress like that I could be like that I could act like that so I started acting as if I was already who I wanted to become I started dressing like the person I want to become. I started doing sports because I said well, I could do sports, right? There's no reason why not. So I started just acting like that person. I started becoming that person. Now, my mistake in doing that was I was doing it for the wrong reasons. I was doing that for approval and acceptance. I was looking for validation, external validation. And it did create a change in my life, but not a lasting change because any change that is made in order to acquire someone else's approval or validation doesn't last. So, I went through a period of my life where I fell off the wagon. I had made some improvements. Some things were permanent changes, but a lot of things were temporary changes. I didn't have true self-confidence. I started to get out of shape. There's this point, I think maybe around 27 or 28 in my life where I went to the store to buy some pants and it was a size 44 US pants. So it was a big pants size and I was like, "Look, John, you're fat." Because I was this ripped jack guy in high school. And then it was like, no, you're fat. And then I realized I had this come to Jesus moment where I realized, look, everybody thinks they're going to be a rock star someday. Everyone thinks that someday it's just they're going to be famous, they're going to be an actor, whatever it is, they're going to make money, they're going to have girls, they're going to have all these things. It's not true. It's not true. Like you have one life, right? This is not the dress rehearsal. And whatever path you're on now, that's the path you're on and that's where you're going to go. It's not going to magically change. I think a lot of people are just waiting for that to magically happen. They think if they it's somehow it's going to work out for them. It's not going to work out for you. Yeah, you know, I had that moment of realization and I said if I want the things that I want in life, I have to make them happen. I have to make a change. So, if I'm fat right now, and it can't start tomorrow, it has to start today. I have to make those changes in my life. And so that put me on this path of personal development. I lost 100 pounds. I started running, started going back to the gym. I started writing blog posts and working on business and just hustling and I stopped being lazy. I started becoming a finisher. Everything I started I finished. And that made a huge transformation in my life in that 5 year time span I became a multimillionaire. I got in shape, but that still wasn't enough. I still hadn't conquered masculinity because I was still a yes man to a degree. I still was not dominant and I really didn't know how to assert myself as a man. I I was still holding on to this victim mindset. So then over the next few years after that time 
frame after I became a millionaire and I sort of retired, I became depressed and I realized that achieving a goal is not what it's about. That the money, the girls, any of those things, none of those things will make you happy. What's going to make you happy and fulfilled is the constant growth that you go through. It's not, the goal is not the destination. The goal is something that is a flag you plant to move you in a direction of personal growth. So you choose your goals based on who you want to become, not what you're going to get. And when I made that revelation and started down that path, I started studying masculinity. I started studying the things that I was still lacking. I had an honest look at myself and I said, John, let's be honest. Let's not judge, but let's be honest. Where are you right now? Are you actually as confident as you say you are? I don't think so. Are you living up to the standards that, that you want to have in your life? No. So I faced all those things and I, I changed my life around. I, I started focusing on becoming more masculine, on facing my fears, on conquering the things in my life that were still missing. And that was a huge transformation. That transformation changed everything in my life. That's where, if you look at my YouTube channel, if you look at the older videos in there, you'll see a different John. You'll hear a different John. His voice is different. His mannerisms different. That's the nerdy, geeky John, right? You can see that total transition in life because what happens is that the most powerful force in the universe is identity, right? Whatever your identity is, that is who you are. That is who you become. That is what actions that you're going to take in life. And so in order to really transform yourself, you have to transform how you see yourself. Just like I was talking about Dr. Maxwell Maltz and psycho cybernetics. And so that transformation was the biggest transformation. That's where I am right now. Yeah, I had the same story too, like uh, this uh, starting as shy. And then when you go through this journey, you just improve a little bit and then just keep improving. And then you will like success is in inevitable, right? Yeah. It's so what's your advice for a guy who's just starting and who's just like getting into this stuff? Yeah. The biggest thing I would say is, well, like I said already, is read books for sure. Read books. Read a lot of books. Always have your head in a book. The second thing I would say is that the basis of all growth is moving outside of your comfort zone. You have to do that. Don't worry about the results. Again, trust the process, divorce the results from the from the process right? There is the analogy in Stoke philosophy of the archer, right? The archer, he draws his bow, he practices, he aims as carefully as he can. But when he lets go of that arrow, it is outside of his control. He's done his job. It may hit the target. It may not. He can't control it at that point. So it's up to us to put in the work. We are not entitled to the fruits of our labor, right? That's from the uh, Bhavad Gita. It says that you're, you're in entitled to labor, but essentially not the fruits of your labor. People don't understand what does that mean? I, I don't get it. Like I don't get paid for the work. Correct. <laughs> it's not about getting paid for the work. Like you will get results from things, but it's not about that. It's about the work. And when you look at what is going to actually fulfill you as a man, which is actually going to bring you happiness and fulfillment, it's hard work. It's a job well done. You would never be more satisfied in life than a job well done as a man. So that's why that is the important thing. So focus on putting in the work, focus on the grind. Don't worry about the results now. You have to know that someone who puts in the work, who constantly is working on improving themselves, who is constantly moving outside of their comfort zone, they will grow and they will get results. So that's what you need to focus on is, is those things. Don't worry about comparing yourself to others. Compare yourself to who you were one year ago. That's the comparison you make. Yeah. And it's a like funny thing that whenever i think of like alpha it it really resonates when i think of you because uh, like when most guys say it it's like cringy or something but when i uh, look at your like look at your content it's oh yeah this is what alpha is like meant to be so what's your suggestion for a guy who wants to develop this dominant alpha masculine personality that's a good question I, the biggest thing is like i was saying before is that Identity is the most powerful force in the universe. So you have to change your identity. You cannot pretend, you cannot act it, but you can act as if you're already who you want to become, and then you will eventually become that. But if you take on the characteristics, if you take the actions of a person who would do the things that you want to become, then you will become that, right? So for instance, if you push yourself physically, if you do hard things, you're going to be, it's going to change who you are as, as a person, right? So you can't fake confidence. You can't fake these things. But as you gain experience, as you move outside of your comfort zone, then more things become more comfortable to you, right? Because if you think about it, what is quote alpha behavior? It is being unapologetically who you are, 
It is being able to be comfortable in uncomfortable situations to not allow someone to rattle you. It is owning your actions, owning your words, having your own judgment be the the pinnacle thing in your life, not other people's judgment of you. And where is that going to come from? That's going to come from constantly moving into uncomfortable situations and putting yourself out there and then realizing you're still okay and it it doesn't matter. So that's where it's going to come from is practicing those things, improving yourself in those ways and being okay with failing and, and stumbling. The more that you put yourself in a difficult situation, the more that you get in a situation where it's embarrassing, the less it'll be embarrassing to you. And then that is going to make you unshakable. The, the other aspect of this, which I think is very important, is because so many guys, they try to emulate what they think is alpha. They try to emulate this stoic, hard, dominant character as a man. But it comes across as arrogant and cheesy and try hard. And some people would say cringe. I just like that word a lot. And, and the reason why is because it's not tempered with love. This is your greatest gift as a man is love, your ability to give love to this world. And so if you think about it, when you think about what is a ruler, right? You think about the a king, right? A king is a great, like you think of the king, right? What, what does he exemplify? Is he just about being alpha and being strong and conquering things? No, you think of him as being benevolent, as being kind, as being fair, right? As being understanding of being unable to be moved to rage. Those are the things that that you think about. So in order to really put this whole picture together, you cannot just be the things that people think is alpha. You cannot just be going out there and talking to, to girls and being strong and being forceful. There's also the gentle side of it that brings the two things together. Because if everything that you're doing is not rooted in love, then you're not going to truly be seen as the father figure, as the king. You're going to be seen as someone who is trying. They're trying to impress people. It is only when you have that other side of it, that's where people feel there's something that they sense in you and they can tell that you're genuine. You're not just trying to do something. You're just trying to impress someone. You're genuine. That's the key. Okay, man. Okay. Awesome. This this book, I, I think you have read it. Uh, you must have read it. The Way of Superior Man by David Data. In that exactly. he talks about it. He talks a lot about masculinity. And I really like this point that masculinity is the force, that piercing force. And femininity is like the, how to say, it, which gives them like emotional and controlling what type, of, I don't know, compassionate or something. So my question is related to this thing I just said. This Is there such thing as an introvert laid back alpha? No, there's not. First of all, let me back up a little bit. There's no such thing as being an introvert. There's no such thing as introvert or extrovert. Labels, as much as you can, guys, in life, you should avoid allowing people to put labels on yourself and you putting labels on other people. You can be introverted in your behavior at times and you can be extroverted. You are capable of both, all right? So when you label yourself as an introvert, what that really means is that you're giving yourself an excuse to not face your fears of social anxiety. That is what it means. You haven't habituated to it. Just like if you were to jump in a pool and that pool is somewhat cold, when you first go into that pool, you're gonna feel cold. But over time, you habituate to the temperature and you feel comfortable in that pool, unless it's extremely cold. But the same thing happens in every circumstance in life, in social circumstances, right? The reason why you're labeling yourself as an introvert is because it's a way to let yourself off the hook to say, oh, I'm just not wired that way. I don't get my energy from being around people. I guarantee you, you have a close group of friends that you get a lot of energy from being around. And at the same time, even someone who's out there social all the time, they can generate and benefit from being alone. They they will get some amount of rejuvenation and energy from that. It is, it is such a horrible myth when whoever it invented the terms introvert and extrovert. It is how you're behaving. It is a state that you're in. It is not who you are. Nothing is who you are. That is very important. So delving into this a little bit more, an alpha, that characteristic, is someone who, if they need to take charge, they need to step up, they do. It doesn't mean that they have to be in the forefront all the time. It means that sometimes they let other people lead, right? They don't have anything to prove, but at the same time, they're not afraid to prove it. 
And so a lot of guys hide behind this. They say, I'm a Sigma male, I'm a lone wolf, whatever, women are attracted to the lone wolf. And they're kidding themselves. And, and I'm not saying this, guys, to attack you. I'm not saying this because I'm trying to make fun of you. I'm saying this because you are deluding yourself in believing this lie, and it's going to prevent you from improving because you think you're already good as you are. None of us are good as we are. We are, but we're not. What I'm saying is that we can always improve. And so if you sit behind this, you say, I'm a Sigma male, I'm a lone wolf, I'm a laid back alpha, whatever it is, you're creating an excuse for yourself to not improve. You need to be able to go out there and you know the truth about yourself. Can you actually go out there? And if you wanted to talk to any woman you wanted, could you do it? Not should you, could you? And a lot of you guys will say in your head, yeah, I could do it if I want to. Okay, then take one month and be the the extroverted alpha guy for a month and prove it. And then if you don't like it and you decide, eh, I'd, I'd rather be laid back and, and not do these things, then fine. But if you haven't done it, don't say that you can, right? Prove it to yourself. You owe it to yourself to see, because I went through the same thing. I, I There was a period of time where I thought I was this most self-confident guy. I could go and talk to anyone, whatever. And you know what? I just chose not to because it wasn't the right time. I don't feel like it right now, whatever it was. And then I had to face the cold hard truth and I had to say, John, you're full of bullshit, man. Like you you say that you're this confident guy, but let me see it, all right? I don't feel like it right now. I, okay, let me see it. Who cares if you feel like it? Just fucking do it. Just, it'll take you five minutes. Go do it. Go call, Go talk to that girl. Go talk to this person. Now, I, I couldn't do it until I had forced myself. And then I realized, okay, I was making excuses. I was making justifications for myself. So that's why I say this. Again, I don't say it to offend you guys. I don't say it because I want to, you know, disparage you in some way. I'm saying it because if you're believing the lie, the lie of the Sigma male, you're stopping yourself from growing. Yeah. This thing is really important. It's like for to take action that way, like just show yourself that you can do it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. And what are the what do you think are the basic rules or pillars of your philosophy that that encapsulates this bulldog mindset? There's a lot of pieces to it. A lot of it's deeply rooted in Stoic philosophy. One of the key things I would say is that you may not be to blame for all the things in your life. Okay. It may not be your fault, but you're ultimately responsible. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if he spilled the milk or I spilled the milk. If the milk's on the floor and the glass is broken, it's my house. I have to clean it up. So I can waste my time saying, oh, I didn't spill the milk. That's a waste. It's complaining. It makes you look weak. It doesn't matter. The milk is on the floor. Pick it up. That's your life. It doesn't matter what happened. I can empathize with you. Sure, you had a hard life. You had things that happened to you. Things were unfair. Life is unfair. Dwelling on that for even one second is a waste of time and it makes you weak. So don't, right? That's one of the tenets. Another one, very related, we talked about this, is you need to make your judgment as a man your central thing in your life. Not other people's, not society, not women, not any of those things. A thousand people could say you're wrong. Okay. It doesn't mean be stubborn. It doesn't mean be pig headed, but that shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter if a thousand people say you're wrong. Now, it doesn't mean don't take in counsel, right? Wise counsel. There are people that are smarter than you, that are wiser than you, that know better than you, that can give you advice. Listen to those people. But at the end of the day, Make the decision because you believe this is the correct choice, not because of pressure from the outside world, not because of validation or approval. And then when you make that choice, own the results of that choice, own the consequence of that choice and be willing to accept those things. Those are some of the core tenets of, of having the bulldog mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing, man. Amazing. And uh, have you seen that Gillette ad controversy that happened some, some years ago? Oh, yeah. So what will you tell people who think like, oh, he, these are just toxic masculine, this just toxic masculinity. What, what should we do this with that topic? Well, I would say that masculinity is masculinity. There is no, again, applying labels here. Things can be used for good or for bad. It's still masculinity. And with many things in life, the good comes with the bad. For example, if you have, let's say, a gun in your house. Okay. It could be used for domestic violence. It could be a dangerous thing to have in your house. Someone could get a hold of it. You could get shot. You could get angry and shoot someone. It's, it's dangerous, but it could also save your life. It could also be 
something someone breaks in, you can defend yourself. So it's the same thing with masculinity. You have masculinity in your life in this world. It could be dangerous. It could lead to some bad things. It could lead to some violence. It could lead to things that you don't want to see. But if you throw out the gun, you don't have the defense. If you throw out the masculinity, you don't have the good attributes of masculinity. You don't have the, the defense, the protection, the things that masculinity provides, the driving force, the achievement in society, all of those things. And so you can call it toxic, right? And you can call certain behaviors toxic. But here's the deal, right? Is that are you willing to throw out the good side? Because there are two sides to the same coin. If you throw out one, you have to throw out the other. And you, you could think, what would this world be without masculinity? And actually, The Way of Men, one of my friends, Jack Donovan, wrote a really good book called The Way of Men. And he talks about this idea. It's very shocking when I first read this. And he's like, being a man has nothing to do with being a good man. There's two different things, right? So you can be a good man. You can be a man. But you can't say that people who are evil or bad in your opinion that they're not men and really what it comes down to is we have sort of this idea of this societal obligation he talks about that in one of his other books i think becoming a barbarian and also it's talked about in another really good book by harry brown it's called how i found freedom in an unfree world really good book but we don't owe society anything in fact mm -hmm. the way that we were you know we've always been as humans is tribal Right. So we tend to think of things as good or bad or this is evil. Or when you think about teams and tribes, it's about what is good is your tribe surviving. Nietzsche talked about this in slave morality in his philosophical writings. He said that the, the slave morality, they say they're bad because they're the oppressors, because they're like whoever. And that it's true, like whatever morality systems develop based on is our side winning that's why in war it's okay to kill the other side it's not murder it's not bad why because at a tribal level you see what i'm saying so we tend to ascribe this morality as a universal thing and yeah there, there's obviously things that, that do apply at that level as far as toxic masculinity and being a man yeah, that that's where I think we go wrong is we think we we owe something to society. We 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 have the wrong perspective on this. So yeah, that, those are my thoughts on it. Yeah, I was having this like uh, amazing burns, man. I uh, I'll really think about it. Like I have to think about it. I will watch the video again and I'll think about it more. Yeah. But uh, I was having this discussion with a friend that is it okay for a man to show emotions? Is it okay for a man to cry? What's your take on that? Yeah, that's a very interesting thing. So the way I look at it is this. Well, so let's start with the emotions in general. Let's ask the easier question. Should men have emotions? I think most people could answer yes. You don't even have a choice. You're going to have emotions. You shouldn't be yes. emotionless. You shouldn't try to be emotionless. So what can you do with emotions? There's three things you can do with emotions, right? You can express them, dump it on people. I'm angry. You can repress them, stuff it down inside. Are you angry? No, I'm fine. OK, you can process them. Let it flow through you. Hey, I'm feeling angry right now. No judgment. I feel the anger. I sense this is what's happening in my body. I let this thing go. I felt it's OK. I'm human just like anyone else. I let it be. So that is really what the core of this question comes down to is, are you handling your emotions correctly as a man? And so if you're expressing your emotions freely, that's not good right? Especially negative emotions. You can express positive emotions, but even to that degree, you have to hold back a little bit because you can't just dump the flow. Instead, it's more to process the emotion. That's important. Don't suppress the emotion either, right? That's not good. Process the emotion. So when we, we talk about now, you know, can men express emotions? I would say yes, mostly positive ones. And it depends on the context. There are going to be situations in life where as a man, you you might break down and cry. But the more important topic is, do your emotions influence your actions, right? This is one of the key tenets of stoicism and of masculinity is that I, I talk about three levels of emotional mastery, right? The first level is what I call wearing your heart on your sleeve. 
that's where you're open and you express your emotions freely, right? You see this, most guys start on the stage, they're like, they see a girl, they're like, I love you. I Let me give you all these things. You're the one for me. Like, <laughs> you're breaking my heart. Like, they write a five-page love letter about this girl that broke up with them and like, tell them all the things, right? Okay, that's wearing your heart on your sleeve. It's not good. It's weakness. It, your actions are being driven by your emotions. You're an emotional being, right? It's more feminine, all right? It's a boy. The second stage of emotional mastery is what I call zombie mode. That is what most people think of as stoicism. It's numbness. It's where you realize that you can't be hurt anymore if you don't feel emotions. So you block it all out. You don't allow anyone to hurt you, but you lose love. You close as a human being. You stop being genuine and authentic and you become like a zombie. Like you're walking through life, nothing can hurt you anymore, but you see life through black and white. You don't see color anymore. You don't have love in your life. You can't feel pain, but you can't feel love either. And you're closed. The third level is what I call feel the pain and keep on walking. Okay. This is where you reopen up again. You open, you're genuine, you're an authentic human being. You have emotions. You allow yourself as a man to have and experience the full spectrum of emotions from pain to love. But the difference is that you don't allow it to control your actions anymore. You're not wearing your heart on your sleeve. You feel the pain, but you keep on walking. You keep on doing what you need to do as a man. A good example of this, if you've seen the, the movie, the, one of the Marvel movies with Thanos in it, he, he has to sacrifice his daughter and he throws her into the, the pit and everything, or like all the things that he's doing in that movie. He's a very good example of stoic because it pains him to do these things, but he believes it is the right thing to do. So he does it anyway. He's not emotionless. He is not an emotionless character. You can see the pain in his eyes. You can see that he loves people, that he feels this pain, that he feels these emotions, but he proceeds forward. So that's the more important thing about this is, can you cry as a man? Can you express emotions as a man? Yes. Yes, you can do those things. I, in the past, I think I had said that, no, you, you shouldn't. And to a degree, it's very true. You should not be easily expressing your emotions, especially if they're negative. You shouldn't be wearing your heart on your sleeve. The, the key thing is, are your emotions causing you to change your action, to become unstable? Right. That is a very unmasculine characteristic is to become an unstable person. Cool, cool. And with me, these things have like sh not showing your emotions. Like it sometimes works too. With, with women, it really works when you are in, let's say you're talking to someone in the cold approach situation and she kind of says something like something weird or something negative and, and you don't react. If you react, oh, don't, what do you mean? Why? That that's uh, really bad, and if you just stay stoic, okay, <laughs> like that that really works. So right. maybe that's uh, that was the point of it to some guys when people said, "Oh, don't show your emotions, don't do this." Yeah, it's about reacting. I think that is really key. And there's a lot of stuff to deal with emotions. One one other quick tip I'll give you guys is anger is always is never useful. It is a lack of power. It's a lack of control. If someone can make you angry, they can manipulate you. They can because anger results in anger. When anger takes over as an emotional state, the cognitive part of your brain, the cerebral cortex shuts down, okay? It's short-circuited by the, the primal lizard part of your brain, all right? So you, a lot of guys try to say it's a good thing. It's not a good thing. It's never a good thing, right? If you allow someone to anger you. The, the key to getting rid of negative emotions is to let go of expectations. If you wanna get rid of negative emotions in your life, let go of expectations. Let go of expectations you put on people, on on, on life. The expectations are ridiculous because you can't control other people any more than you can control the weather. And so if you put expectations on anything in life, and I know it sounds crazy, you are actually the crazy one because you're, you are trying to control something that you can't control and then basing your happiness or your emotional state on something that is outside of your control. If you want to truly embrace a stoic mindset and truly become a stoic and develop your masculinity, you must allow your emotional state to be governed by things that you can control primarily. So that's one of those things that will help you with emotions, guys, is don't allow yourself to put expectations on things. Let go of the expectations and you will find that you will be more stoic and that you will not experience the emotions that will drag you into doing the wrong things and taking the wrong actions. Yeah. If they say can't, they can't read you, usually it's a good sign. 
Yeah, I would say in general. But remember, guys, don't forget, and this is what I think a lot of guys miss in, in the whole pickup thing in, in attracting women, is the romance side of it, the seduction side of it, seducers, right? We, we look at the old stories of John Juan and, and Giovanni and, and all these, these these guys that were had seduction in, in romance. So don't be afraid to like, when you think about it, it's not just being cold and be like, okay, I'm this pickup machine, all this stuff. It's also, you are creating a story. You're creating a romance for her because that's what women thrive on. And so don't forget that part of it. That to, to, to a very large degree is being authentic. It's being authentic. It, it is to some degree, you're not wearing your heart on your sleeve, but you are letting her in. You are letting her in on the positive emotions like you're experiencing those things with her and you're creating that environment. So don't forget that part of it because that's very important. Because yeah, can you have success and pick up if you're just a cold, emotionless guy and you're just alpha? Sure, okay. Can you create a better experience? Like, can you make a, a woman fall in love with you in an evening? That's a much better experience for you and for her. And that takes a lot more skill. Yeah, and like, some guys come into this pickup thing with this frame, like this is me versus her. You have to like, right. do something to her to give you the uh, thing. So th that's not how it works. You have to be collective. You have to like think about your both of your experience. And then it's, it's like a V frame, not like you and me, you versus me. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, let's take some questions quickly. Should I become more dangerous physically or intellectually? Let me see. Okay. That's interesting. So here's what I'll say about this. The way to develop mental toughness is through physical discipline. That's the shortcut, the fastest way, right? So work on physicality. It will, what David Goggins says, callous your mind, right? It will form calluses in your mind. That's how you develop mental toughness. And so go join Muay Thai, kickboxing, jujitsu, some kind of physical, get into actual combat, right? Don't just join a karate class and do katas. It's good, but go in a tournament, get punched in the face, all right? That is what is going to make you actually unlock that beast that's within you. And you're going to develop the mental toughness and training for those things. Go and sign up for a marathon, go run and train to do that. That will help you to, to get to that, that point. And that is a critical part. The physicality is a critical part of being masculine. Cool, cool. And how do you convey that you're a dominant guy to girls? I think it just it conveys itself, right? It's just in your the way you way you walk, way you talk. <laughs> yeah. Way. To a degree, it's that identity that we we're talking about. Specifically, I would say it's in your ability to assert yourself and to be non-reactive. If I don't care about the outcome, then I'm dominant. For example, let's say that you had a bunch of school children that you were telling them to go line up or something like that. You're in charge of, you don't care whether they like you or not. You don't care. Like you're like, I'm the one who's in charge. Like it, like you can say no, you can say whatever, but I'm what I'm saying it doesn't affect, I don't say, oh, oh shoot, I was just, this five-year-old doesn't like what I'm saying. So maybe, oh, maybe I should rethink that. No, you're like, no, this is what we're doing. Like, you don't have any problem. I guess what I'm saying is leading a five-year-old, okay? That same mentality, that is the dominant mentality. It doesn't mean being a dictator. It doesn't mean being like running people over with your being aggressive and, and all those things. But it means saying, not, not really caring if people give you buy-in or not that's what it is and so if you're non-reactive if you go up to a girl and you talk to her and you talk like it doesn't really matter if she gives you a positive response or not you're just going to say what you want to say and you're going to do what you want to do that's going to be dominant that's how you're going to convey that yeah and just uh, like in be your behavior to write the uh, like uh, when i was a beginner in this thing that i used to say oh do you want to go and go there or something now right. nowadays i just say oh, let's go there exactly then, yeah this type of so and uh, this question you are into uh, like fitness thing too so yeah so restless and fidgety i don't know if necessarily that's necessarily a bad thing you're going to burn some extra calories being fidgety it's it just can you control that energy when you need to right maybe go and start running start doing something with that energy like you've got extra energy, right? And, and it, it may be also that if you're doing OMAD, it may not be the OMAD, it might be the caffeine because you might be drinking a lot of coffee. A lot of people who do OMAD start drinking a bunch of coffee 
because they don't have anything else to eat during the day. And so that might be what's going on. If it's nervous energy, that's a different thing. Nervous energy you can get rid of by switching from self-consciousness to self-awareness. Self-consciousness is judgment of yourself. How do I appear? What am I saying? Did I just say that? Does it sound like an idiot? Oh, is this girl interested in me? Oh, why is she looking at me like that? Oh, shit, I feel like such an idiot. Uh, maybe I should just go. Like, that's self-conscious. That's going to create nervous energy. Self-awareness is, oh, that's interesting. What I said didn't make a lot of sense. That's fine, though. That's, you know, that happens. Oh, what is she saying? Oh, okay, this is what's happening. No judgment. It's not bad or it's not. You're not such an idiot, John, because you said this stupid thing. This is what's happening. I feel nervous right now. Maybe I even express that. Hey, by the way, I feel really nervous right now. I just want to tell you that. Cool. I don't care that I said that. I don't judge myself because I said that. I don't judge myself because of how I feel. As you move from self-consciousness to self-awareness, the nervousness disappears. Cool, cool. And uh, what was the thing? Yeah, it's the final question, uh, John. Okay. Final question. Because I know we don't have that much time. <laughs> we won't take your time that much. So what do you, uh, during this online and instagram and tiktok thing do you think it, it's possible for a man to ha have a good relationship can you find a good girl <laughs> yes yes so let me give you a two-part answer to this all right so the first thing is yes it, it is it is possible right there are, are plenty of girls that fit the bill out there you should be definitely you should have standards okay that is a key thing, right? So you can find, like a lot of guys say, oh, it's jaded Western women, right? Okay, I get it, I understand it, but that's an excuse, all right? For instance, I have a girlfriend who's wonderful. She's an amazing person. I have buy into all of the, the things that, you know, and she she's truly a seller person and she's very rare, uh, of course, but. They are out there. The second thing, and I think maybe this is the more important thing that I'm going to say about this, which is you as a man are responsible for a woman in a relationship and you will shape who she is to a very large degree. Okay, now start with something that is already close to where you want, have standards. So for example, if you are dating a girl and she's disrespectful to you, dump her. Now you can say, this is how you have to do this from the very beginning. As soon as a girl is disrespectful to you as a man, you need to say, I don't like that. You said this, I don't like that. If that's not enough, that's a problem. If she continues, you just leave, just leave the situation. Don't get angry. Don't get upset. Don't yell at her. Don't get into an argument to say, I told you, I don't like that. That now you're setting a boundary. It's clear. So you're filtering out a ton of women just by doing that. Now, some women, you're going to have two categories of women. You're going to have some women that don't give a fuck. They're like, I don't care. <laughs> Feminism, girl power, whatever. Right? They, they don't care. I don't care if he likes that or not. And you're going to have other women that are going to say, okay, I want to be with this guy. Some, some of those women will be like, I like that this guy asserts his boundaries. He's not like a pushover like every other guy. He's not an asshole, but he told me what he didn't like and he was willing to walk away. I like that. I'm going to go apologize. I, I know where my boundaries are with that guy. Okay. They're going to feel safe around you. And then what's going to happen is in that relationship, you have to keep continue to assert those boundaries. Women are receptive. Guys are the action takers. You have to understand that. So you are responsible. You have to have the mentality as a man that you are responsible for the relationship. Now, if she is being disrespectful to you doing, then you're, if you're staying in that relationship, that's your fault, right? So you have to take full responsibility for it and realize that you have a huge influence and you can shape her to be the woman that, that she needs to be. And she wants your guidance and help in, in doing that. So a lot of guys try to use this as, as a cop out and say, oh, there's no good women out there. No, you make a good woman to a degree because she's going to respond to your leadership. And this isn't a negative thing. It isn't like a dominant, a domineering thing. It isn't a controlling thing, right? I'm not saying to be controlling. What I'm saying is that she should respond to your leadership and it should improve her life. And, and she should start to develop some of the values that, that you have. That's very important as a man. Yeah. I agree, I agree. Uh, do you want to take a few questions from chat or should we? Sure, we could do a couple more and then I got to go. Oh, awesome, awesome. When you meet John Anthony in Vegas, story. <laughs> yeah, I'll give a quick one. I was out there coaching uh, a couple of guys out there and I was talking to a, a girl there and he 
literally stepped in front of me and he's about an inch taller than me. I'm like six threes. I think he's six, four. And I was like, what the heck? I didn't even react in time. I didn't even know what the hell was going on. I didn't know it was this girl's brother or something like that. And by the time I figured out what was going on, he already had blown up the set. And so then I started talking. I was like, yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, I see you're coaching over there. And he was now at this time, again, John, great guy. I, I like John a lot. He was a little bit of a belligerent a-hole at the time. He was like, he was drunk and he had an alcohol problem at that point in his life. He's since sobered up and, and it was a huge improvement in his life. So he did some kind of crazy stuff. I won't re repeat it just because I, there's no point in defaming someone for their past. But by the way, he, he definitely offers great advice today. Good guy. I disagree with some of the stuff content in and I think he's really stopped making more of the content attacking people. I just don't like it in, in general. I, I say to anyone, I'd say to his face, I've told him face, I've told to anyone's face that I don't like content that is attacking other people or saying something negative. There's no point as a man I believe in saying something negative to, to about someone else. But yeah, that's the story. How to develop a voice like you? That's interesting. So I didn't really do anything besides change my identity. If you look at my older YouTube videos, I had a very high pitched squeaky voice and now I have a much deeper voice and a lot of people say, oh, it must be steroids or something like that. No, because my voice changed before I got on testosterone supplements. So I do take TRT, right? I started doing that when my SHBG started to go really high. I'm 41 years old. So I started like 38, 39 years old. But before then, everything changed. And what I would attribute it to is identity. Because not just my voice changed, but my mannerisms, my whole persona changed. And I talked about that breakthrough that I had in masculinity and where I feel like I really became a man. And that was a mental thing. It was an identity thing. And it changes how you act, how you talk, all these things. There's a really good book called Fear of Life. It is actually Elliot Hulse turned me on to that. And it talks about essentially this idea that a lot of the trauma in the body is trapped in the body. So this emotional, like emotions you haven't processed, right? And so it affects your physicality, your voice, like your muscles could be constricted in your voice. You might have a higher pitched voice, right? Because you're, because you have something that's blocking you, you, the way you walk, like you can look at a person and you can tell their confidence just by looking at them, just how they're standing and how they're walking in, in, in all these things. And I forget the, the exact term for this. Now I can't think of the, the term, but I did a lot of yelling and screaming and like getting that stuff out, trying to unblock those emotions. And that, that made a huge change. The other thing I'll say that I did actually do that may have had an influence on it was uh, I have a daughter and when she was really young, I was reading her books and I would read children's books and I would focus on being very loud and enunciating very clearly and resonating in my chest when I read that. And so, because I was reading that every night, I do think that probably had an influence on that as well. So th those are my thoughts on it. Cool, cool. The questions came, but do you want to take one? one sure, last? we can, yeah, we can, yeah, take one more. Cool. So this, this is, the, maybe I would have ended the stream with this one too. Like, how do you tackle inner demons? This is a tough one. So there's two things I would say about this, okay? One is honesty and acceptance, all right? And maybe these, these are combined in the sense that in order to tackle your inner demons, you have to be non-judgmental of yourself and you have to realize that just like an acorn growing into an oak tree, you're at some stage in your development and it's not wrong for you to be where you are and you're not the oak tree yet, but that's fine. You're on your path. And so you have to let go of judgment. Really, you cannot love other people until you love yourself. You have to let go of the judgment of yourself. Whatever stick you apply to yourself is the same stick you're going to use to beat other people with whether you realize it or not. And so if you want to tackle those inner demons, you have to first forgive yourself. You have to accept yourself exactly where you are, whatever state it is. And to realize that no matter where you are right now, you, it had to be this way for whatever reason, you either lack knowledge or discipline, right? It's to some degree, it's ignorance. You couldn't really help it, right? It doesn't mean you're not responsible, but we're all where we are because of circumstances that are beyond our control in, in a sense, because we didn't decide our DNA. We didn't decide the environment in, in, in the thoughts that went into our head. We've made choices, of course, but 
You have to let yourself be, you have to forgive yourself. That's the first step. Then when you do that, now you can be authentic. Now you can look in the mirror without judgment and without justification. Because most of us, the reason why we can't tackle our inner demons is because we fail to see them. We justify, we make excuses for the way that we are instead of just accepting it. And once you let go of that, and then you can see it, then you can look at the mirror and you can say, look, here's what it is, honestly. This is where, where, this is where you're falling down. This, it's not bad. Like, I'm not mad at you, all right? You love yourself. You're like, I'm not mad, but you're weak in this area, okay? And, then, and it's okay to be okay there right now. It's okay. That, if you just, see, the, I'll, get, I'll end this with the, the biggest secret to life, guys, okay? There's no such thing as evil. There's no such thing as bad people. There's no such thing as any of these things in life. It's all a lack of awareness. Everything in life is a lack of awareness. Every problem you're facing, okay, every harm or hurt that you've done to someone, every hurt that anyone has ever done to you is all based on a lack of awareness. So your goal in life is to become more aware. As you become more aware, those demons will disappear. You will become a lot more loving person. You will treat people better and people will ultimately treat you better. Or, or it won't matter to you as much because you won't take offense to things. So our goal here, right, again, is shining light on those demons. As we become aware, and the only way to do that is non-judgmentally, but we just understand that the problem solves themselves. If you could truly see the demons that were inside you, if you could be totally aware of what they were, they would disappear instantly. And, and many things in your life, many problems in your life, just by shining a light on them, having that awareness, they will disappear. Amazing, man. Amazing. I have to watch this stream again. <laughs> Just think about it again and again. Well, th thank you, man. And uh, John, what are the plans and what can people learn from you and how can they get in contact, con contact with you? Yeah, the best thing to do is to go to bulldogmindset.com. I've got a 10-question quiz there that will give you a bulldog score. And from there, I'll send you some emails telling you how to raise your score. You can also check out my YouTube channel or Instagram if you want to. I do some one-on-one -on -one coaching very limited slots available. You can reach out to me and I can get you in if I have some slots, but go to bulldogmindset.com and sign up on the email list. This way you'll stay in touch with me. Awesome. Awesome. John, thank, thanks for coming, man. And we should, yeah. we, uh, you are welcome anytime, whenever you want, because we can go deep in some other topics. But thanks for coming, man. It was amazing. And yep. uh, thank you everyone for watching. I will put the link, uh, not, I'll put the list of the books John talked about in this stream later in the uh, right. comment. Cool. Thanks Thank for you. coming, man. Yeah. Take care.